Rich Owens from markmeldrum.com here with a quick video relevant for CFA Level 1 candidates or any candidates who want to see an example of the application of classic DuPont analysis. We're going to walk through the classic version of DuPont, making sure we've got those three elements down and we know how to combine them together to get ROE and interpret. First of all, let's define ROE. It's return on equity where return is net income from the income statement, divided by average equity. Equity is in the balance sheet, and the CFA prefers if we have a ratio with an income statement and a balance sheet figure, use the average balance sheet figure for the year. So net income divided by average equity. First thing you should do when you look at the ratio is decide what it's telling you. Well, this is a profitability ratio. It's telling me how much net income did I generate given the amount of equity I had to use. And that is more useful than just looking at net income alone. Let's illustrate that by looking at two hopefully familiar companies. On the left, Walmart. Huge US retailer sells produce, toys, clothes, basically everything. On the right, Tiffany & Co very high-end jewelry store. Never been. Now, if we look at the net income for Walmart in 2020, it's $14,881 million. Tiffany, $541 million. So vastly different. Walmart's net income, about 27 times that of Tiffany & Co. So on the face of it, these two aren't really that comparable. But Let's calculate return on equity. We've got the net income figures. Let's divide that by average equity for each company. Walmart, average equity, 8593. That gives an ROE of 18.5%. And Tiffany on the right, average equity, 3233. Net income of 541. That gives us 16.7%. So although the net income figures are vastly different, the ROE isn't that different, much more comparable. Once you take into account how much equity they needed to use to generate those earnings, they look fairly similar. But we're here today to go even further than that. We're now gonna break down those ROEs and see what generates the return. And we'll do it using DuPont analysis. We're going to break it down into those three ratios. First of all, we start with income over revenue. Multiply that by revenue over average assets and multiply that by average assets over average equity. Now, those three ratios to some extent should look familiar. First of all, net income over revenue, that's the net margin. How much profit you make per dollar of revenue. Revenue over average assets that is asset turnover. Given your asset base, how much revenue do you generate? And finally, leverage. Assets over equity is a measure of how much of your asset base is financed by equity as opposed to debt. It's a leverage measure. Multiply those three together and you get back to ROE. It's just a case of simple math. If you're multiplying revenue in the denominator, by revenue in the numerator, and average assets here, and average assets there, they'll cancel out. And you're left with net income over equity, ROE. So let's see it work in practice for our two companies. Walmart, first of all, here's some more detail. We'll pick out the figures we need. ROE, as we know, is 18.5. Let's break that down using DuPont. So first of all, let's get the margin. Net income for 2020, revenue for 2020, margin 2.84%. Next up, asset turnover. Well, we'll need average assets, which we've calculated here from the two asset figures, and the revenue figure we just used. That gives 2.3. Finally, leverage. Well, we'll need for leverage the average assets again and average equity. Leverage is 2.83. Multiply those three together and you are back to 18.5%. Let's do it for Tiffany. ROE is 16.7. 
Start off with the net margin, this year's net earnings, this year's revenue, net margin 12.23. Asset turnover, well, average total assets, same revenue figure, 0.74. And finally, leverage. We have our average assets. Here's our average equity, leverage 1.85. Multiply those three together and you've got Tiffany's 16.7% ROE. Now, certainly in the exam, there are questions that just ask you to do those calcs. But much more interestingly, you could be asked to interpret, to analyze, use the A of CFA. That's where the fun begins. Here we have them side by side. Walmart, 18.5. Tiffany, 16.7. Similar but very different ways of getting there. Once you look at the DuPont analysis, there's no way you'd say, oh, similar ROEs, similar businesses. They're markedly different. Let's look at how those three ratios combine to give each ROE. Take a moment to look at the figures and one thing should immediately leap off the page at you. And that is the difference in margins. Tiffany, 12.23% net margin, Walmart only 2.84, that is a huge difference, which to a certain extent you would have expected. Financial analysis readings always tell us to set our expectations. You would think a high-end jewelry store would have a higher margin than a retailer like Walmart. But despite that, Walmart, making a living with its 2.84% net margin, still ends up with a higher ROE than Tiffany. How does it do it? Well, Partly a higher asset turnover, 2.3, instead of Tiffany's 0.74. You may also have anticipated that. Think of what it costs in assets to build out a Tiffany store. Pretty high-end fixtures and fittings and locations, etc. Compared to what it costs to fit out a Walmart store, it's going to cost you per dollar of turnover much more in assets for Tiffany. That will bring your asset turnover down. Finally, Walmart also has higher leverage, so it's financing more of its asset base using debt. That's going to force up your ROE. Now, that kind of analysis could be a classic exam question. You might be presented with enough information to work out the DuPont analysis for the two companies and be asked, what are the reasons that one company's ROE is higher? And the answer would be, in this case, turnover and leverage. That's how you use DuPont to break down ROE. Be prepared for it in the exam. Don't just learn the formula. Think about what it's telling you and be ready to apply it.